Warning, this video is about a robotic talking banana. Therefore, it deals with issues of racism and other offensive subject matter. If you are easily offended, you should probably skip this one. Hey guys, it's Mike. I haven't made a video in three months. I made a talking banana. Hello internet. And a bunch of really bad things happened and I'm gonna tell you about it. So back in February, I decided I wanted to make a new robot but this time I wanted to make something not just for me, I wanted to make something where my subscribers could interact with it. And the idea was to make a talking dancing banana where when people sent me chat messages on a YouTube live stream, the banana would say it. Now I got it working, but things didn't really go how I planned. It's been a really weird three months and I wanna tell you guys the whole story. And that story is in five parts. Part one, is building the banana. I'll show you guys how I made it. Part two is streaming the banana. Part three is the banana set itself on fire. Part four is I was banned from Twitch. And part five is the return of the banana. So this is how the banana works. There are two servos. There's one servo to make the banana dance and there's one servo to make the mouth open and close. Those are attached to an Arduino, which also has an LCD screen attached to it. Then over on my computer, I start up a YouTube live stream and wait for a message to come in. I wrote a program that connects to YouTube and sucks in the messages. Now that my program has the message, it connects to the Arduino and sends over the author of the comment. Then the Arduino displays the author's name on the LCD screen. Now that the Arduino has the author's name, it knows that a message is coming. So it tells the banana to stop dancing and then tells it to move its mouth based on the volume of my computer. Then my program reads out the comment, the banana moves its mouth, and that's how it all works. February 20th, I went live with the banana on YouTube and people seem to really like it. At any given time, I'd have about one to 250 people trying to make the banana talk, which was great. I let it run for about 24 hours and then the mouth servo broke. I actually broke quite a few servos in this project, but I'm gonna get into more details about that later. Now with a lot of people sending messages to the banana, I didn't want the banana to get lagged way behind the chat. So I made it so every three seconds, the banana would pick the most recent comment. That way it would skip some comments, but it would always stay up to date. So you wouldn't have to wait a long time for your message to get read by the banana. Now, one way around this was with super chats. On YouTube, you can tip a creator and help support the channel by sending a super chat, which is $1 or more. So I programmed the banana to never skip super chats. People seem to really go for that. I even got some super chats from some people that I recognized, like William Osman. He had the banana plug his channel, which I thought was kind of funny. So after about three days of streaming the banana on YouTube, I started getting messages from my subscribers saying they were getting kind of annoyed. Apparently on YouTube, when you're streaming, your video gets stuck at the top of people's subscription feed. So people want to see new videos from other people that they're subscribed to, but my banana would always be right there at the top. So at that point, I decided I don't want to piss off all my subscribers. So I took it off of YouTube and I started to write the code to move the banana to Twitch. While the banana was offline, while I was upgrading it for Twitch, I did a poll and I found out a few interesting things. One thing was the majority of my 95,000 subscribers had no idea that I had done almost 80 hours of banana streaming on my YouTube channel. On YouTube, if you want to always get an alert about a channel, you have to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, sometimes you don't get a notification. And it seemed like for a live stream, YouTube basically told nobody. So it was a very small subset of my subscribers that actually saw it. The second thing I learned was that a lot of people wanted the banana back. So I worked really hard to finish up the code so I could get it live on Twitch. And that's where the banana's been for the past two months on the Useless Duck Company Twitch channel. Now, a lot of people were curious about how much I actually got on the Super Chats. And I don't mind telling you guys, um, it was very generous and thank you very much. On the first day, the banana received $500. On the second day, the banana received $300. And on the third day, the banana got $200. Now this is pretty crazy. So I got $1,000 from a foam talking banana over three days. 
I mean, even my Patreon, I get a hundred dollars a month. So I got 10 months of Patreon support in three days with the banana. And it kind of tempted me to just leave the banana on YouTube all the time, but I just didn't want to piss off my subscriber base. So I decided it was still a good idea just to move it to Twitch. Now Twitch also has donations. They call them cheer and bits, but it, it, the revenue was much smaller. It was maybe three to $5 a day. So this part of the story is pretty serious. As I mentioned earlier, I kept burning through the servos for the mouth and it was just driving me nuts. So I decided to go on Amazon and buy a much more expensive servo. I picked this Animos servo. It had metal parts, metal gears. It felt a lot more solid. So I installed it. I made sure it was working. And then I just left the stream on and went off to my friend's house. Now I had my phone with me, so every once in a while I would glance down at the phone and just make sure this Twitch stream was doing okay. And about halfway through the night, I look down at my phone and I see smoke. N -O 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 -O. don't die banana. Now at this point I was pretty scared because no one was home and I was about to lose everything that I own to a banana fire. So I ran outside as fast as I could. I started looking for a cab. I couldn't find one, so I ended up just ordering an Uber. Now the Uber took a while, but when he showed up, I jumped in and I told him, listen man, I have a banana at home and it's on fire, so we gotta go. And he just looked at me and said, okay. He got me home pretty quick and I gave him a good tip. When I got home, the smoke had already stopped I checked the servo and it was well over 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the end, I was just lucky a worse fire didn't happen. So this is how it happened. I use a lot of servos in my projects and I've never had anything like this happen before. I looked it up afterwards and this has happened to a few guys that do remote control planes and stuff like that, but I didn't even know this was possible. So the servo had a catastrophic failure and had a short circuit inside of the servo body. So the servo was plugged right into a five volt, three amp power supply. And then that was plugged with an extension cord right into the wall. Since it's short circuited, it's basically like if you just held the extension cord wires together and it became so hot that it had a meltdown and the little hobby wire I used to power the servo just melted apart. And this is what the wire looks like now. Now it's pretty dumb to use one of these little wires for three amps. But in the end, it was sort of lucky because it got so hot that it acted like a fuse. It melted apart and then turned the servo off. If I used a thicker wire, the fire might've started somewhere else, who knows? So after that happened, I put together a new circuit board that has fuses for the servos, which are pretty low amperage fuses. So now if this happens again, I don't know if it ever will, it'll just pop a fuse instead of trying to burn the place down. Also now I won't run any of my projects while I'm out of the house. So with the banana fire proofed, I put it back on Twitch and things were going pretty well. At any given time, I'd have maybe 25 or 30 people trying to make the banana talk. And then one night I got raided by a Twitch streamer called Greek God X. Now this was pretty crazy because all of a sudden I went up to 600 people trying to make the banana talk at a time, which was great, but it was also really late at night. So I decided to just leave the stream on and go to sleep. Now, another thing to know about Greek God X is that the people who watch his stream call themselves the GGX gang. And while I was asleep, the GGX gang did some very bad things to the banana, which I'm gonna talk about next. Now, what they did is not good and it's pretty offensive, but I wanna be honest about it. And I wanna talk about it from like a technical perspective because as a programmer, it's actually really fascinating what happened to the banana. But as a person, it's kind of sad because it said some pretty bad things and I ended up getting banned from Twitch for it. Now, one thing about being banned from Twitch is that the video of the stream, when you got banned, gets automatically deleted. So I can't actually show you the footage of what they did. Also, I'm too afraid to show exactly what they did on YouTube because I don't want to get a strike on YouTube. So to be safe, I'm gonna take a clip from one of the most popular YouTubers there are. And this is a short piece from one of his most popular videos. And we'll kind of use that as a reenactment of what happened. So let's say 
This is the GGX gang, and this is the banana. This is what happened. Dude, look at this channel. Look at this channel. It's it's a it's a it's a banana that says everything. GGX gang bang 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 wing ding walla walla bong bong ping pong try hard seven class N I G G Welcome back to Streamers Reloaded, my name is Tom and let's get right into the news. But first up, as always, we got the updates on the bans from the previous week. So starting off the stories I missed from Sunday, so a Twitch stream who goes by the name Useless Duck Company. This guy is a programmer and he was programming a banana to say things that were being said in Twitch chat. Help me, I am a girl trapped in a banana body. The only problem is there was no filter for this program. And of course, this banana was just saying the N word on stream several times over and he received a 24 hour ban for it. So it was pretty bad and it was pretty shocking to me when I woke up in the morning, I came over to my computer and I saw the stream was down. I had been banned from Twitch for 24 hours and I have a permanent strike on the channel. Now Streamers Reloaded is actually wrong in what they said. There actually was a filter on the banana, but the GGX gang found a way around it. Since Twitch deleted the stream as part of the ban, I couldn't use any of that footage to figure out exactly how they got through the filter. But luckily, I programmed the banana to keep text logs of everything that it said, so I could use that to see what happened. Picking through the logs and looking at all of the offensive comments was actually pretty interesting from the perspective of a programmer. It was kind of like when there's a plane accident and they recovered the black box. But this time, instead of the pilots saying Mayday as the plane crashed, they just kept repeating the N-word until the plane exploded. So looking through the logs, I started at the bottom to see the last things the banana said before it got shut down and it was pretty obvious what happened right away. The GGX gang were taking words and adding accented characters. That way they were getting words through that were not on my filter. Once they found a word that worked, they just kept repeating it until the admins had to take it down. Now fixing it was pretty easy, I just added a piece to my code that would strip out accented characters. Then I took the bad words that they said, added it to my bad word filter list, and then it was just a matter of waiting 24 hours for the ban to be over, and then I put the banana back online. Now as soon as the GGX gang saw the banana was back online, that is when the real battle started. First, the GGX gang quickly figured out that they couldn't use accents anymore. So they started taking bad words, moving the first letter to the end of the word, and then repeating them. That way, it would make it sound like the banana was saying the bad word. So to solve that, I added an extra step to my bad word checking service. Now the banana takes the sentence, removes all the spaces, then searches the sentence for the bad word. Next, they started chaining together non-offensive words like Snickers, the chocolate bar. It turns out that if you repeat that a whole bunch of times, it doesn't sound very good. So I just added words like that to the filter, and then that took care of that. Next, they started doing word combinations of good words that would sound bad together, like this and this. Now, at this point I realized I can't account for every bad word combination everybody in the world could possibly come up with. I had to do something a bit more drastic, so I wrote a phonetic filter for the banana. Basically, it takes my filter list of bad words and converts them into symbols that represent the phonetic components of each word. For example, the word I had the most trouble with is represented by this code. This is done using an algorithm called double metaphone, and you can find details about that on Wikipedia. Next, my code takes the incoming message and converts each word to symbols, then searches those symbols for each of my bad word symbols. If there's a match, the message is skipped. I also run the phonetic filter a second time with all the spaces removed from the message, just in case someone is trying to sneak a bad word in by adding or removing spaces. So now not only does my banana not say bad words, but it also won't say anything that sounds like a bad word. At this point, I realized I have the best bad word filter I could possibly make. It might even be the best one on Twitch, I don't know. I started up the banana again with the new phonetic filter and it worked really great. So the GGX gang jumped on it immediately. They were trying so many different combinations. It was actually kind of, it was a mix of racism and creativity kind of blended together. 
as they tried to attack it and get through. But they never did. They couldn't break the filter. And I thought, that's it, I had won. And then they started coordinating. So each member would take turns one at a time spelling out letter by letter bad words to have the banana slowly spell it out, which was creative and interesting to see, but that was really easy for me to take care of. So I added some code to fix that as well. So now I have one strike on my channel and the best bad word filter on the internet. So in the past few weeks, I've been adding improvements to the banana. I added a green screen so the banana could join me in video games while I'm on Twitch. Oh man, this is not going very well. Just score a goal, it's not hard. I added a bunch of Easter eggs, so if people type certain things, things will either fly across the screen or it'll play a little video clip. I also added a mini game and special thanks to Blob Van Dam on Twitter who did the artwork for the banana. It looks fantastic. Do you think you can take me? Let's find out. It's basically like a Pokemon game where everybody watching can vote together and then try to attack and kill the banana. So since the fire and since getting the ban and the strike on the Twitch channel, it just takes a lot of energy for me to run the banana now. I always have to be around. I'm always listening to it to make sure it's moderated and nothing gets through the filter. And I have a lot of other projects that I wanna work on. So I've decided to kill the banana and I'm not gonna stream them anymore. Except I will put the banana one last time on YouTube on this date for like a farewell banana tour. So I've loved this entire project. It's one of the most fascinating things that I've ever worked on. It's kind of bittersweet shutting it down because I just have so many new things I wanna work on and I'm excited to get to them. I wanna thank everyone on the internet who played with my banana on cam. I really appreciate that. And that's it. The Talking Banana Robot. Another invention from the Useless Duck Company.